on December 31st, 2014, having just moved into the city of Bloomfield, Indiana, 18-year-old Marina Bolter disappeared. This is the IGA that Marina Bolter, when she got off work at six o'clock, December 31st, 2014, she entered into this parking lot. Witnesses say Marina's ex-boyfriend, DJ Lockhart, accompanied by three mutual friends, pulled into the parking lot shortly after. Somewhere here, they confronted each other. We know that there was a confrontation here because Marina was on the phone with Toby, and Toby said that Marina responded by saying, oh, it's DJ. From what we could tell is Toby was married. Her apartment was a couple blocks away from Toby's house. Toby was the last person that she was on the phone with. Marina then got into a unknown vehicle at the time. Witnesses say Marina got into a vehicle of an unknown male. A few weeks after Marina went missing, the driver of this car came forward. According to the police, the driver had nothing to do with Marina's disappearance. Witnesses state that the car DJ was in went in one direction, while the man who drove Marina went into the direction of her apartment. From what DJ told law enforcement, the guy had dropped Marina off at the Pizza Place parking lot, which was just right across the street from her apartment. Cell Tower Pings explained that shortly after the time Marina would be dropped off, her cell phone no longer accesses the cell phone towers, hinting that someone may have destroyed the phone. There was no proof that Marina even made it back to her apartment. And from what we know, that's the last time anybody ever seen Marina alive. My brothers and I, we decided that it'd be best to head to the local IGA and kind of retrace the steps that Marina took that night, run a spirit box session, and just see if we we're able to pick up any information on what may have happened to Marina. The spirit box that my brothers and I used was developed by a researcher over in the UK. The closer we get to where a crime was committed or something tragic took place, the stronger the responses are through the spirit box. June 3rd, spirit box session, Marina Bolter. Marina, if you could hear us, we're at the IGA that you love to work at. Can you see us, yes or no? Marina Bolter, can you communicate with us, yes or no? We're trying to help your mom find answers. During the spirit box session at the IGA, the one thing that we kept getting over and over again was go left, repeatedly. And that's the one thing that we look for when we're running these sessions, is things that are more repetitive. We're looking for things that repeat consistently over a long period of time. What is interesting about go left is in order to get to Marina's apartment, you would have to pull out of the parking lot and turn left. Marina, can you still hear us, yes or no? I think it said Marina left. The man's responding, so I think that's just oh. why he's talking. Let's talk, keep talking to him. Man. Who is this that we're talking to? Did you know her? Give it a little bit more time. Ask again, who are we talking to? Who are we talking to? Did you hurt Marina? Just let me try something real quick. I just want to see this is just a test, see if it's just this. Can you hear us better?
Who is the man that we're speaking with right now? Is this DJ? With DJ, you know, he would have been the one person that we really, really wanted to speak with. Unfortunately, six weeks after Marina's disappearance, while attending a party, DJ was stabbed to death during an altercation. Is Marina's body on land? River. What's the name of the river? Is Marina's body in the water or is it near the water? I think we should head over to the pond now where you wanted to go. Look around there for a minute. And then you want to swing by that, her apartment? Oh, did you want to go over to the pond so we can have that as closure or you want to go straight to the apartment? After we wrapped up the spirit box session at the IGA, I thought it would be best for us to go to Tressie's house, Marina's mother, and see if we can uncover any more additional information on Marina's case. Meeting with the family the first time, you really never know what to expect. Hey, Tressie. Josh. How nice are you? Nice to meet you. It's Rocky. Nice to meet you. Come on in, guys. It was New Year's Eve 2014 when she went missing. Can you kind of walk me through those steps? You know, where she got off work and try to be as specific as you can. My daughter's Marina Bolter. And she came up missing on December 31st, 2014. During the day, like before her shift was over or whatever, um, I was getting ready to go to Terre Haute. So I stopped in to see Marina at the deli at IJ and told her Happy, or, Happy New Year's and I loved her. And um, then I went headed up to Terre Haute, Indiana. I had a phone call from my father. He asked me if I'd heard or seen from Marina. I told him no. Asked him why, and he said because her boss even reported her missing. So I had to drive here from Terre Haute, which is like about an hour, to come down here and find out. And she's not been heard from since. She got off work at 6 o'clock, and she was headed across the parking lot to get in this car with this man. The, do not, the cops don't tell me his name, but I know he's local. Did she know the guy she got in the car with? Um, that, I don't know. The cops, like I said, the cops won't tell me what his name is, but I know that he's local. Usually Marina would have taken a ride from the same people. So her just getting in this guy's car was, it was weird right there anyways. Within five minutes after she got out of that parking lot, there were no more pings off her phone. The last ping was right there by her apartment. And there's nothing, nothing since. The last words that she said over her phone was, oh, shit, it's DJ. So she hung up the phone got in the car and five minutes later no more pings on her phone nobody's heard from her since just nothing I, I pray all the time but it was so bad that i was praying to god that somebody feel her arms come out of the posters i mean i have pictures i have a marina wall in my bedroom there's her cross but this is her totally so anytime you're in this room especially at night sleeping and stuff you're just surrounded by completely marina. surrounded by her and I will say this card right here, Marina gave it to me. And um, I was crying one day in this other room over here and it fell. So it was kind of like, you know, Marina telling me that it was okay. And this picture here kind of hit me when I first walked in. Yeah, that was the day that Landon was born. And you can see the look on her face here when everything changed too. And she was really scared of having a baby. But right here, you can see the look in her eyes. She wasn't scared anymore. She knew she was blessed to have him landed. And he was a beautiful little baby. It was amazing because I, I missed the birth, but I came in after that. You can lay back in the crib. I'm going to
You're so sweet. You looked up and smiled at me when it said 33. That's me. And I was wishing that I could hear my daughter say I love you, Mommy, again. Hey, baby boy. Look at those eyes. That will get to see her in this one. And out of nowhere, this card fell out of the top of a closet and hit me in the head. And it says, there's no such thing as too much magic, too much pixie dust, or too much fun. And no such thing as too many happy wishes for a birthday girl like you. And it says, happy birthday, I love you, mommy. She always called me mommy. She says, I love you, mommy. Just hearing those words, I love you, mommy. I knew she was always telling the truth. What we want to do right now is we'll go do a ghost box session. You know, we'd love to have you join us. I can't, you know, promise what will come through and how it may affect you. But I just want you to be open to, you know, what answers we do get. I, I would love to. Um, like I said before, I don't care how we find her, but however it works, and I'm up for anything to, to just get her back. I need her back, however she is. She needs to be laid to rest. I greatly appreciate you guys coming into my life right. because no one else is going to help me at all. And I really appreciate it. It gets really, really lonely out here and it makes me look down that driveway and go, why doesn't anybody care? Why won't anybody drive up it? And you guys drove up it. You guys are amazing. And I'm so grateful for you. Go find some answers, okay? Right on, I'm ready for them. And I would love to hear, I love you, mommy, again. Sometimes it can be very helpful to have the family members there with you when you're doing the spirit box session because they'll have that stronger connection with the victim. The drawback is they hear everything as it happens live right there. So there are things that come over the spirit box that are very emotional to the family. But we know in order to get the information that we need, we have to ask the tough questions. We're at Tressie's house right now. Crystal. DJ, do you know what happened to Marina? Do you have anything that you want to say to Tressie? Did you hear that? Female voice came across it. I love you. <laughs> Knowing how bad Tressie wanted to hear Marina say I love you one more time, when it came across the spirit box, it just validated that she was still with her mom. If nothing else, we provided Trussie with that one last moment with her daughter. This is what pushes us so hard to work day and night on these cases and let them hear their loved ones maybe one last time. Can you tell us where you took Marina? Can you tell us where you took Marina? DJ, if you did something bad, right now is the time to come clean. She just feels uh, compelled to help with cases, and typically she helps uh, detectives. I sent her a photo of the person who I'm needing her help with. Uh, in this case, it was Marina. She said that she could see Marina walking home, crossing the road, and it was, it was really dark, and she said that she saw this man forced her into his car, and she said that uh, Marina was, was passed out, and then she started coming to, and she could look out of the window, and she saw trees on both sides tell me the direction that they went. And immediately she started saying, he drove south. So we started going south on this map and uh, eventually it led in to a covered bridge. She could see a brown shed and uh, she said that this man continues to use that shed as a placeholder. So he will return to the area and uh, ensure that no one has been there. From the brown shed, there are trees around and there's an opening. And she said that's, that's where Marina is. She's in that opening. Once we wrapped up the spirit box session at Trussie's house, we decided to drive in town to see if we could document any more information on Marina's case. So for right now, let's just go to the IGA and we'll kind of okay. go through what we know okay. happened that night. She got in a car right here. I don't know if I if we knew the man. I know he's local, but the cops won't tell me his name. She got in a car here. Where do they think that she went after and that? Straight to her apartment. Okay, can you show and us? We are. It's like two minutes away. Okay, show us which way to go. You're gonna go back left towards the gas station that we just came from. And I think that. Uh, 
I don't believe my daughter is alive. I have like little lights in my heart for my children. Hers is out. This is the parking lot that my daughter got out of the car on. This is the apartment building right here that my daughter lived in, apartment B. I tell myself, what if he's holding her you know, captive, but he lets her see the things that people do for her. So I tell myself that, because I can get lost in these woods out here and just never talk to anybody again. But I can't do that for her. Somebody's gotta stand up for her. So we know that she left the IGA, came, came right here, here and no supposedly this is where he dropped her off. Yep. And there was no further pings after this area. Nope. You no, know, I hope somebody that knows something will just be like, dang, her mom won't stop. Because I won't. I don't care. She's, she's somewhere. And she deserves to be brought home and be laid to rest. Now, Marina's apartment was part, was B. I'm not sure which one that is. No one's back. However she is. We ended up driving with Tressie over to Marina's apartment. We weren't in the parking lot more than 10 minutes and we noticed the same truck kept circling the apartment. At that point, I felt that I needed to get the guys and get everybody out of the area for safety reasons. So we left Marina's apartment and we drove to a more secluded location. The only person that knew that we was coming in the Bloomfield was Marina's mom. And I know the cops had the dogs out here. So they searched this area? Yeah. But I don't know how far over they went from the tracks. I think, you know what I mean, as far as I know, I don't know if they came over this far. I don't want to find my, do my daughter's dead body. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to be the one. But if nobody else is going to be looking, I bet I will. So if somebody wants to give me that information, I'm right here. Give it to me. We had looked on the map and we'd found a remote area that was more secluded, about a quarter mile from Marina's apartment. And our hope was that we could run a session and get some more information. This area was definitely remote and close to Marina's apartment. I think if we stay away, stay outside the no trespassing signs, we should be all right. We're trying to figure out what happened to Marina Bolter. Do you know what happened to her? Can you tell us where she's at? DJ Lockhart, do you know what happened to Marina? Yes or no? But the same male voice keeps coming across. Can you tell us where she's at? Can you tell us where she's at? And you don't believe DJ had anything to nope. do with this? Not one single part of me believes it. If anything would have happened, if it would have been like accidental, DJ would have been the first one to call the cops. I'd be like, oh my gosh, we got in a fight. She fell and hit her head or whatever. And he, he just wouldn't have, I could just tell like being a mom. And they all think, you know, that the truth died with DJ. Do you know what happened to my daughter? Do you know what happened to Marina Bolster? Please tell me. How far south do we need to go? Did you hear that? What? Yeah, what did it say? Covered bridge. Uh. Swear to God, it said covered bridge. I heard something, but I couldn't make it out. Do you know who took her? Can you give us a name? Can you give us a road? Maybe. DJ, did you have anything to do with the disappearance of Marina? 
said something. Can you tell me who took Marina? Is it close to the bridge? Said yes. How did you hurt her? Stabbing. That's what I thought. DJ, if this is really you, how did you die? I asked, how did DJ die? And it came across direct and clear, stabbed in the heart. From hearing the response that DJ died from being stabbed in the heart really helped validate for me that we was on the right track. Autopsy reports show that DJ's fatal wound was a stab wound to the heart. From everyone that we spoke with, DJ seemed to be a really good kid, just made a lot of really bad choices with drugs and alcohol. DJ and all three of his friends were given polygraph tests, which law enforcement said there was no signs of deception. That's the same voice Let's that says sorry. You get the same male voice that keeps coming over and over There's and over one again. That said sorry. Mm -hmm. DJ, do you want us to go down the bridge, yes or no? Yes. yes. Let's go. Yep. You have to tell us twice. That's what we're <laughs> right. We gotta find her. I don't care how long it takes. I want her found. I just need her found. But this is probably, what, a mile from Marina's apartment where she was abducted from. We keep getting the same male voice over and over again. I say we just head down to the bridge. There is a covered bridge. If you go south from her apartment, we have, like, the covered bridge kind of famous around here. A lot of people go there to smoke. A lot of people say, if DJ did it, he's not going to take me, you know, where she's at. And I'll, that's wrong too, because he went everywhere I said we're going. And I, he only asked to go one place, and that was the cover bridge because they found blood out there. After we wrapped up the spirit box session over by Marina's apartment, we ended up leaving and going south of town to a covered bridge. So what we'll do is we'll get down there. I think there's a pull off on the other side of that bridge. Uh -huh, there is. I mean, don't you find it weird that that's the one place he would point out and say, hey, can we go search here? It didn't seem weird to me because it seemed like it was finally somewhere we could go as a point. He only asked to go one place, and that was the cover bridge because they found blood out there. It's the only place he ever requested that we go search. Other than that, he didn't care. He knew I was driving somewhere, and we were gonna search. If something like that happens, you're not gonna drive all over the place looking for an area. You're gonna wanna, you're gonna go to somewhere you're familiar with. Yeah, and that would be cover bridge. I'm to the point now, I just wanna find out who this bastard is. Right. That way they get their punishment. Amen. So we wanted to run down to the covered bridge, run another session, and see if we could uncover any more information on what may have happened to Marina. So if we go to the right, right here. Um, you can't drive it though, we have to go through like a little gate, see? But we can go back there. Yeah. I know other people are praying for her, but like I said, when you lose something, what do you do? You look for it. How far do you know where they searched? Nope, I wasn't allowed, I'm not allowed to be part of the cop searches. Okay, hand me that It's like really box. hard to sit at home while like they were doing it. I know, but I keep getting feedback. As long as you don't get it close to the... Whoever was speaking with us earlier, we're at the covered bridge now. Is this the right area, yes or no? I keep getting that same male voice, but it's so faint. Do you think these power lines could be doing it? I don't know if I'm getting static from these lines. Let's try to move away from these lines. So we can get down there. DJ, is this the right area, yes or no? Okay, you might want to go that way. Is it in this area? DJ, are we in the right area, yes or no? Can you tell us which direction to go?
Did you know at that time, was there snow and stuff on the ground? There was no snow, but it was like, it was like this, cold, but then it rained really hard. I wonder if they could even drive back this area. The day of, whatever happened to Marina is awful. But if I, she, she did open her heart to God. So God gave us his only begotten son. And if he needed my daughter, then he was saving her from a whole lot of ugly. And I just prayed that it went fast. So, I want her back. That's kind of selfish. If God has her, I would be very selfish. Because this world is ugly. It's ugly, it's evil. And all around us. Can somebody please tell me if we're in the right area? You said right area? Area was real loud. Do we need to go closer to the bridge? Come closer and ask something. Maria, Just ask if we're in the right area. Are we in the right area? Is Marina here? Do we need to go closer to the bridge? Should we far walk farther on the path? Do we need to go back? Marina, if you can hear me, can you give me a sign? DJ, are we getting close? Yeah. Well, I don't feel like we're in the right spot. Do we need to keep walking? Are we getting close to Marina? I couldn't hear it. I spot. Huh? I don't know if it was. Can you say that again? Which way? DJ, were you with Dustin and James that night? I thought I heard it. I was. I was? Yeah, that's what I thought I heard. Let's go back to the bridge and see what we get better responses back there. Because I mean, that would be the most obvious thing to search. I've been out here in the woods uh, searching, hoping to come across something. I guess I'm just cold and tired now. And just, you know, still hoping and praying that what me and my two brothers are doing, we're going to end up um, finding something. Sad to say, you know, if Marina is uh, passed away, maybe we'll be able to contact her. We're gonna um, go ahead and meet back up, regroup, and see where the next spot's gonna take us. Can you tell us which way to go? Is this the right area, yes or no? Can you tell us which direction to go? DJ, are you still with us?
I mean, hell, this will be an area you could drive to. Are we in a better spot now? Do we need to go back this path? I know as soon as I walk out in the clearing, one of those deer hunters will take me out. After the first day of our investigation in Bloomfield, we had ran several hours of spirit box sessions. We had done several interviews. So we wanted to go back home, go over all of the information, go over all the video footage and spirit box sessions and see what information that we had. So we've been back from Bloomfield for a couple days now. I'm just going over some of the footage and the sessions that we did. That is where we did the first spirit box session over by Marina's apartment. I really feel that we're as close right now as we've ever been to finding out what happened to Marina. I'm gonna get this stuff printed off, meet with the guys, we'll head back to Bloomfield the next couple days, do a few more sessions, and then hopefully our next trip out there will be meeting with law enforcement. Hi Tracy, this is Josh. And it just so happens that there is two registered sex offenders that live within a mile, mile and a half of that trestle. And both of them would fit the description that DJ gave of the guy that she got in the car with that night. DJ told me that it was not Butch driving that car. Okay, so we just trekked up the side of a mountain. We're at the trestle now, just outside of Bloomfield. So we figured this would be a good spot to come out and try a ghost box session. A man that lived in the same apartment building was once in prison after being charged with murder after he raped and tortured a young girl, including removing her eyeballs and lighting her body on fire. Did a guy abduct you from the IGA parking lot? Yeah, Marina Bolter, is your body out here? Yes or no? Marina, we need you to try really hard to communicate with us. Who did you get in the car with that night? Is Marina Bolter's body out here at the trestle? Yes or no? I think it said died. Yeah. Where do we need to go? Which direction? Marina, do we need to keep going down? Which way do we need to go? How do we know for sure? That one area we were at, the first place we did ghost box session, we were getting good responses there. Yeah, I don't think this right here is the right area. Our main goal is to find out what happened to Marina. There definitely is a driver. They refuse to tell me his name. So when somebody to stand up and speak out. If you know something, let me know. Somebody knows something. There's no way in our little small community that nobody knows anything. Somebody knows something. And she deserves the respect to be brought home. So far the trestle's striking out. Continue on County Road 400 north for one mile. So I'm thinking with DJ, with him being stabbed, maybe that's what we were picking, off, picking up on with the stabbing. Because chances are this guy could have been stalking her. And maybe that's why her cell phone went off so fast. See, now that we're closer to her, her apartment, if we start picking up, that just helps validate that maybe that trestle just wasn't the right area, you know? The man that lived in her building. Now, he moved out of that building, so for him to move right there by the trestle, that's kind of weird for me. What we should do is turn around and park where we're right here so we can see if somebody's coming down. 
and then we can jump in the car and take off if so. If everything's straight with the driver and the driver really dropped off and didn't circle back or anything. And if he did circle back, he would have had to get right out of our apartment because it's just right across the street. Got back here to a secluded location. Chances are nobody's even back here in the middle of winter time. You drive back through here. It's blocked off from the main road. You're not gonna drag a woman, lifeless body, across the creek. So your only other option would be back in this area. My hope is that they would be open to the idea of what we we were able to document and the areas that we feel are most important to be checked out. We've spent a couple days out here working the Marina Bolter case. So far, this is the one area that we've gotten the most compelling spirit box communications. And this is actually an area that, to me, feels weird just walking around it. Like you get that feeling that something bad happened here. So hopefully we can convince the detectives to come back here and search this area. Did DJ bring your body out here? Can you help guide us? Can you tell us to go straight, left, or right? Go back. Uh, right. That one. The chances are that she might be over somewhere near the car. It's not like she's some little kid that you can just drag around. Yeah. DJ, can you hear us? Yes or no? Marina, can you hear us? Yes or no? Yes. Are you close to the railroad tracks? Marina, we need to find out where you're at. You've got to give us a sign. Oh, shit! Go, go, go! You're not thinking how close they are. It's just time to get the f out of the whole situation. They're shooting! Holy sh**! Go! Once we heard the first shot, my reaction is just run. It's like all hell burnt loose. You know, gunfire, they was running, I was running. Screw the camera, screw everything. All I could think about was, let's just get the f out of here. I got it, go! Let's get the f out of here! You just seen a tunnel. You knew you came out of that tunnel, so run for the tunnel. Oh, go, go, go! Do it, hide right here. Oh, hide. Oh, That's why he's shooting us. Somebody was shooting. After hearing the gunshots, my brothers and I decided to leave town. So what we need to do is when we get up here, turn the car around so it's facing out. So if we need to get out of here quick, we can jump in the car and get the hell out of here. This is not a place you want to f around with. Yeah. Right here, yeah. We get shot at again. This will be the last time we come back here. Hey, this is where you guys were when you the, shot up? Let's pull up here by this gate. Well, let's do a, yeah, we'll back up there, we'll do a session. Determined to find answers as to what happened to Marina Bolter, a few weeks later we decided to head back to Bloomfield. I think I'm getting anxiety just standing here. Hey, I'm recording on the audio. DJ, we're back down here in this area, down by the trestle. Can you hear us, yes or no? Trestle. DJ, can you tell me is Marina's body buried down here? Yes or no? Marina, is your body down here next to the quarry? Which direction do we need to go? Do we need to go out towards the top of the road? Marina, were you taken to the quarry? What is your body by? Something fence. Yeah, boys. 
there was there. What was there? You want to walk down and see if there's a wooden fence? Good thing about doing this in the middle of the winter time, you don't have all the bugs. Marina, can you hear us? Marina, is this the right area? Marina, we're by a bunch of rocks right now. Which way do we need to go? Said I'll push you. I want to see what's down in that hole. Oh, that hurt. But I would think if they'd be anywhere, you'd think they'd be closer to the path. What's that? The body. Do we need to go towards the quarry. Big white sign. Yeah. Are you near Plumber's Rally? I think I broke my ankle. Well, if they didn't know we we're here, they know now. Marina, what color vehicle were they driving? I'll have it on my face, too. Maybe we get in the car and do it. I say we head further down, just see if there's a white sign and a wooden gate. I don't feel safe in this place at all. Yeah, I mean, just drive down there, see if the wooden gate. We don't find the body, we're gonna find the Larry. Yeah. That's all right, we've got a horse fly out here now. We got this one freaking mosquito. Marina, is your body in this area, yes or no? Marina, are you closer to the bridge? <laughs> Cover bridge. Marina, can we see your body from here? So she had a pair of glasses that she wore. So she finally got these brand new glasses and they were purple, purple rimmed. And then she had a blue purse that had the um, Paris Love on it. The only things missing from her apartment, the coat she was wearing and her purse and her cell phone. Hey guys, Josh here with Living Dead Paranormal. Due to the recent COVID-19 pandemic that's been sweeping across much of the world, my brothers and I were forced to put a stop to all production of season two, Chasing Evil. Once a lot of these restrictions are lifted and we can get back out and safely start filming, we will do so. We're gonna meet up with the canine team and go search many of these areas. We appreciate all of your guys' patience and support, and we hope that all of you guys are staying safe. Thank you for watching, and like I said, we'll update each and every one of these episodes. And again, be safe and stay healthy. Thanks. Marina Bolter was last seen wearing a black and purple plaid coat, white Nike shocks, and her cross necklace. If you have any information on the disappearance of Marina Bolter, please contact the Greene County Sheriff's Department. Anonymous tips can be left with Crime Stoppers. Marina's young little boy will never get to know his father, but because of the action of an unknown person, he too will not get to know his mother. When someone makes the decision to interfere with the lives of another by taking them away from those who love them, it leaves behind many victims. This is true evil.